We're a broken family, aren't we? Something important about neurodivergent people is their people. Lilo is very unique, very different, and is just not understood by a lot of people, adults included. People treat me different. There is a real profound wisdom that people don't see because they're not used to seeing it in someone so young. Dad said Ohana means family. That's what Lilo does, is remind her sister what our family is. It's little and broken, but still good. One of the beautiful things about family, whether they're blood or found, is the fact that I'm going to love you, I'm going to comfort you, I'm going to show you compassion, and I'm not going to blame you, and I'm not going to attack you. This is just the way that the chips fell. Until we meet again. Welcome to Cinema Therapy. My name's Alan Seawright. I'm a professional filmmaker who needs therapy way over there on my right. Is Jonathan Decker, licensed therapist who loves movies, and joining us today... Hello, my geeks and peeps, my explainers and entertainers, my little oodle allies, Rebecca Parham here. <laughs> so excited. <laughs> it's Rebecca from Let Me Explain Studios. <laughs> so for those of you who haven't seen Let Me Explain Studios, uh, you need to go right now because it is nonstop fun and Just mad creativity. Delight. It's Your channel is delightful. Have people told you this before? I mean, sure, but like, I, I just have to say that I was so happy when I stumbled across your guys' work because it's just, it combines everything I love in, in filmmaking and storytelling and and mental health and just mushes it all together and I'm just I'm thrilled to be here. We're nothing if not mushy. It's the dad bods. <laughs> so good to have you here. What are we doing today, Alan? Today I thought I would have a therapist and an animator, storyteller, fellow filmmaker react to Lilo and Stitch. Oh, super fun, happy times. Yes, it is a great <laughs> film. Uh, this one's kind of near and dear to your heart. Oh, ab correct? absolutely. Um, it was for the longest time when I was growing up. It was my favorite film, and it meant so much to me, and I can't tell you how much of an honor it is that I get to sit here on your channel and geek out about it. And you're actually allowing me to do that. Oh. Well, that's strange, that's but okay. <laughs> <laughs> we don't allow anybody to do anything. <laughs> Sophie and Megan are the ones with the real power. Sophie and At this Megan point, we're puppets on our own show. <laughs> you're a wee little puppet man. So with that in mind, let's dive in. Stop. Lilo, why are you all wet? It's sandwich day. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the audience's Pudge reaction as well. Pudge the fish, a peanut butter sandwich. Pudge is a fish? And today we are out of peanut butter. So I asked my sister what to give him and she said a tuna sandwich. I can't give Pudge tuna. Do you know what tuna is? <laughs> fish? <laughs> I'd be an abomination. I'd be an I'm late because I had to go to the store and get peanut butter because all we have is is stinking tuna. You know, you know, <laughs> why is this so important? Pudge controls the weather. <laughs> You're crazy. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my gosh. Such a hard turn. Everybody, yep. calm down. So great. Girls. Uh, Oliver la -au. Lilo. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. Maybe we should call your sister. No, I'll be good. I want to dance. I practiced. I just want to dance. I practiced. So this seems like a good time to bring up that Lilo is something of an icon in the autism community. Yes, yes. Uh, not the violent outburst, but everything else about this scene speaks to that, why? A lot of people with autism definitely have very unique and, and, and different interests, and their perceived peculiarity by you know neurotypical people mm -hmm. makes it really hard for them to make social connections. And so yeah. I, I see this and I see you know Lilo is having that exact same struggle. She's very unique, very different, and is just not understood by a lot of people. Adults included. It's sandwich day. And Pudge no controls the weather. Pudge yeah. controls the weather. Duh. <laughs> of course. Everybody knows Pudge controls the weather. Yeah. Check out even more in an extended director's cut on our Patreon. 
is over here somewhere. And if you like supporting us but love saving money, consider an annual subscription to our Patreon. It means a lot to creators like us to receive upfront monetary support, and we have so much more cool stuff that we want to bring you in 2023. And in return for your support, we are offering a 16% discount. That is two months for free. If you sign up for an annual membership, you'll get exclusive content like early access to ad-free, extended director's cuts of our episodes. Therapy and filmmaking deep dives. <laughs> Behind the scenes. And bloopers. Wow. <laughs> and a whole lot more. Go to patreon.com slash cinema therapy and join today. You'll be our hero. Logo. Hey, I brought you some pizza, in case you were hungry. They had a fight. We're a broken family, aren't we? No. Maybe a little. Maybe a lot. I shouldn't have yelled at you. We're sisters. It's our job. <laughs> Yeah, well, from now on... I like you better as a sister than a mom. Yeah? And you like me better as a sister than a rabbit, right? Oh, 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 oh. Yes. Yes, I do. I hit Myrtle Edmonds today. You hit her? Before I bit her. <laughs> <laughs> Lilo, you shouldn't. People treat me different. They just don't know what to say. I'll tell you what. If you promise not to fight anymore, I promise not to yell at you. Except on special occasions. Tuesdays and bank holidays would be good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my camera's full again. Aren't they beautiful? <laughs> She is so neurodivergent, it's amazing. Yes. <laughs> she is a true artist, is what yeah. she is. What you currently have in your mouth is art! Well, and you have to appreciate the fact that Nani developed those photos for her. So Nani yeah. is showing support of her unique interest. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I love Nani as a character. Nani is one of those amazing unsung Disney heroines. Because, uh, I mean, you can see in this scene that, you know, they're they're both dealing with a lot. You know, they bring up immediately the broken family. And this is a very new wound that, that is trying to be healed. Yeah. And Nani, as a very young person, I think canonically she's supposed to be 19 years old in this film. Yeah. So, you know, maybe it even happened within the years when she was 18, the big accident happened with her parents. And so she mm. is doing her best to be an adult and be there for her sister and having to step into this role of caretaker and mom when, you know, she's barely out of, uh, into adulthood and out of childhood herself. Yeah. With Lilo, we talk about her being neurodivergent and Nani's a bit more neurotypical, which means we're a broken family, aren't we? No, no. Because a neurotypical person, there's a social cue of, oh, this person needs comfort and socially we're socialized to lie and comfort people. Yeah. Whereas with Lilo, it would never occur to her because social cues aren't what she picks up on or she doesn't see the world by the rules of society. So it would never occur to her to like soften this for her sister, but she is just being real. Yeah, she's much more concerned with the the factual like yeah. framework than she is with like how people are gonna feel about it. And when she says Tuesdays and bank holidays <clears throat> would be nice, to her, that's not a joke. To her, that's a literal statement. Like, that sounds like a good arrangement. That's, that's probably about the right number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they do have a very sweet, very sweet bond when they're not at each other's throats, yeah. which is true for a lot of us, a lot of families. Yeah. A lot of families, yeah. Well, And I just love watching a budding artist finding joy and beauty in fat tourists. Like, <laughs> <laughs> And then she says... They're beautiful. <laughs> you know, uh, there was this notoriously cut scene where it tackled head on the relationship between tourists in Hawaii and the native Hawaiians. Ooh. Hey, speak English? Which way to the beach? Showed a glaring light on the racism involved in that arrangement sometimes. And some people believe that the whole her taking pictures of tourists thing is kind of a leftover element of her kind of like- Like taking the power Taking back. that back. Prepare to die! Be careful of the little angel! <laughs>
It's not an angel, Lilo. I don't even think it's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> he says cranky because it's his bedtime. He's creepy. He's asleep. He's asleep. Oh. You're losing the house all the time, oh. and I sleep oh, just fine. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> So, Stitch's voice is one of the co-directors, right? It's Chris Sanders. It's Chris Sanders. It's Chris Sanders, yeah. Oh my gosh, he does such a great job. And he'll, so he'll, you weird. know, you ask him to do the voice at conventions, he'll do it. Oh, that's amazing. Neither have I. Dad said Ohana means family. Huh? Ohana means family. Family means nobody, nobody gets, gets left, left behind. Or? Or forgotten. I know, I know. I hate it when you use Ohana against me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, you can sleep right next to me. <laughs> Chris Sanders' vocalizations in that are such a weird, like, horrible monster that's also cute. Mm -hmm. That's not an easy thing to pull off. Like, <laughs> And then the animation on Stitch where they're like, he's sort of a non-Euclidean organism that can just, like, remove spikes and limbs and whatever. I can just suck them into myself. Uh -huh. It's just, like, <laughs> it's so much fun, the design and the animation of that character, where they're just like, uh, we're Disney, we wrote the rules, so we can just break them. He rolls around like a potato bug, crawls around like a salamander, <laughs> you know? He just <laughs> sticks his feet in his mouth and rolls away as a ball, and she's like, I don't think he's a dog. <laughs> See, and that's what they were really so setting good. out in this, is that they were like, we want to make this movie weird. We can go on It was a part of Disney's experimental era that happened immediately after the Renaissance, because yeah. the Renaissance was kind of losing its steam, and they went through this experimental phase with like Emperor's New Groove and Chicken Little, and, and Treasure Planet, and Treasure Planet, mm. and Atlantis, and Lilo and Stitch was one of was a part of this, and it was actually one of the few that really did like well at the box office. It's <laughs> it's really out of that whole phase. It's really the only one that was like a hit. Yeah, there and, were a couple that yeah. made money barely. barely. Emperor's New Groove is a cult classic. Very yeah. much, yeah. But it's Treasure it, Planet as well. Yeah, yeah. Go, Delbert! Go, Delbert! Go. Okay, okay, you're both grounded! Uh, Ohana means family, and family means no one gets left behind or forgotten. Mm. Are we are we living in alignment with our, our values? Mm. Are we living in alignment with what, in this case, like what Ohana means for me? Because that's, that's what Lilo does, is remind her sister, you're not living in alignment with our, what our family is. <laughs> I have never been to a beach in Hawaii where I didn't see that guy. Yep. I've never been to a beach in Hawaii where I wasn't that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I love how everyone's built in this, like they all have like these massive legs. That's part of Chris Sanders' style is that all the weight sinks to the bottom. Yeah. And Nani is, you know, she's, especially as a Disney woman she's built very realistically yeah that yeah she's very... not like a little stick figure yeah right? well she's fit but it's a very polynesian build i'm having a bad day hey i might not be a doctor but i know that there's no better cure for a sour face than a couple of boards and some choice waves what do you think i know you surf I do surf, and he is correct. He is correct. I surf as of last year, mm -hmm. not well, but enough that I've ridden waves all the way into shore. You've gotten a couple of choice waves. I've gotten a couple of choice waves, and it is, it's exhilarating. Whether or not you believe in God, uh, you will. <laughs> That's what the Jehovah's Witnesses need to do. They need to take people they surfing. They need to take people surfing. <laughs> <laughs> I love that that happened throughout the film. I mean, some of the, the animators and designers went over to Hawaii and spent some time there to, to really immerse themselves in the culture and just get the look right. Because Hawaii has a very specific look and feel. It's it's a really unique place, and they put a lot of work into it. Well, and I just I just kind of have to give props to Chris Sanders and his co-director, Dean DeBlouis. They They went out of their way to redo their research before it was considered cool in Hollywood. Yeah. You know, it was still, you know, kind of 
not standard practice to go and research the the culture that you were about to represent in your movie and and like the behind the scenes is so fascinating to see how much care and consideration you know especially in any sort of sort of cultural signifiers like a hula you know they mm -hmm. they had it you know choreographed by a real hula dancer and they you know and they even specifically said hula is not typically respected in Hollywood, so we're going to do different, we're going to do better. And so I do respect that very much. Mm, that's very cool. Lilo, honey. We have two, huh? Don't worry, you're nice, and someone will give you a job. I would. She's reading the wrong cue there. But with so much good intention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which this song was written as a farewell by the Queen of Hawaii when it became annexed by the United States, right? Like this is... Mm -hmm. I think so, yeah. And so it's very poignant here because she's singing farewell to her sister. Where the U.S. government is literally trying to rip her family apart. Yeah. yeah. But Lilo, something important about neurodivergent people is their people in the sense that she cares deeply she feels deeply sometimes in interactions it can seem like a neurodivergent person doesn't because you know one person zigs and the other zags and and a neurotypical person if they're insensitive and ignorant could say what is wrong with you yeah. as opposed to okay this is just a this is simply a different way of relating that exactly. I can I can become fluent in with experience and open mind it's such a, this is such a, okay, you asked me yesterday if I might cry watching Lilo and Stitch, and I'm like, nah. And How I do you not this. cry watching Lilo and Stitch? I, I cry in like six different scenes. <laughs> of course it's me, so I cry in six different scenes in John Wick. I don't know. <laughs> but this is a beautiful moment, speaking of their relationship. You know, you, you see, we talk about found family, but sometimes found family is just family with the roles realigned, right? Because sure. in this case, she's both sister and mother, and one is both sister and daughter, and it's a major growth experience, and it's not going so well. But one of the beautiful things about family, whether they're blood or found, is the fact that sometimes you can't make things right. Sometimes you can't fix things, unless it's Disney and everything lines up for a happy ending, which mm -hmm. you know happens here. But there's a, a painful truth in this moment where it feels like it's not going to get fixed and in real life. It may, it might not, you know, right. that I'm still going to, I'm going to love you. I'm going to comfort you. I'm going to show you compassion and I'm not going to blame you and I'm not going to attack you. This is just the way that the chips fell and we got to make the best of it. And how often do people from the outside see like, you know, a relationship where a person is neurodivergent in that relationship and because it looks different, they assume there's something wrong with it. Right. Like, Bing Rams' character keeps showing up. Granted, like, the house explodes. Like, a bunch of terrible things happen. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Listen, he's doing his job, and there's a reason for that job. Yeah, but he initially doesn't, he doesn't get it. Right. And a lot of times, we need to slow down. If I'm dealing with someone who's neurodivergent, I need to slow down to get it. And I need to slow down to understand it instead of saying, no, you need to play by my rules. And if I'm dealing with a relationship, instead of judging it, say, okay, this seems to be working for them even if I'm not understanding it. So I should take the time. Exactly. Or just leave them the hell alone. Or that. <laughs> he's so cute when he's not destroying things. That's mm -hmm. us before. It was rainy and they went for a drive. What happened to yours? I hear you cry at night. Do you dream about them? I know that's why you wreck things and push me. Our family's little now, and we don't have many toys. But if you want, you could be a part of it. You could be our baby, and we'd raise you to be good. Ohana means family. Family means nobody gets left behind. But if you want to leave, you can.
I'll remember you, though. If I remember everyone that leaves. Damn you, Disney. <laughs> <laughs> Often with uh, neurodivergent, especially neurodivergent children, there is a, a real profound wisdom that people don't see because they're not used to seeing it in someone so young. Yeah. And the neurodivergency means, in this case and in her case, an ability to see and accept things as they are that others aren't psychologically or emotionally ready for yet. Even adults right, don't want to deal in truth or in reality. And Lilo, through the whole movie and through her whole story, sees and speaks the truth. Yeah. Which also means because she lives in truth and in fact, she's also, she doesn't have the, the clinginess of a lot of children and even a lot of adults of please don't go. I can't soldier on without you. She's like, you can leave if you want to, but I'll remember you. I mean, just that, that, that is a level of maturity that neurodivergent people often don't get credit for or recognize for, you know, like it's a yin and a yang one side is, okay, I may not pick up on social cues or behave by the same rules as everybody else, and that's hard for other people to deal with. It makes them uncomfortable. But the flip side is, because I don't play by the same rules, I also don't do a lot of the same bullshit. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know? Uh -huh. And just a, a small note um, from a filmmaking standpoint, a lot of people interpret that the reason she's so concerned with giving Pudge the fish a peanut butter sandwich and because... Pudge controls the weather. It was rainy and they went for a drive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if Pudge had gotten his peanut butter sandwich, her parents would be around. Yeah. You're the cause of all this. If it wasn't for your experiment 626, none of this. Stitch. What? My name Stitch. Stitch, then. If it wasn't for Stitch. Uh... This is kind of a tropey joke. But man, it works great. Yes. Can Stitch say goodbye? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> a little pan over. Okay, pan back. Wait a minute. Who are you? This is my family. I found it all on my own. It's little and broken, but still good. Yeah, still good. And then he gets to stay and everything wraps up in a nice tidy bow and Leela gets to take more pictures of fat tourists. <laughs> <laughs> well, you this is so where you see Stitch's character arc because, I mean, you can even imagine it from the Grand Councilwoman's perspective because the last time she saw Stitch, he was acting like a monster, like he, like almost a mindless destruction machine. And to have, you know, the contrast of seeing him at his worst to now seeing him at his best from what he has learned through family and found family at that. You know, it is, it is so clear the difference between him at the beginning of the movie and, and the end. And it's just a, a wonderful example of a very clear, distinct character arc. Mm. Yeah. Most of the scenes that we've watched, there's, there's a lot of big bombastic filmmaking in this movie. Mm -hmm. We didn't watch any of the action stuff. Not that there's nothing, there's no storytelling there. There's a lot of storytelling. And some really movie, broad comedy. It's and great mm -hmm. broad comedy. Th this movie, you know, it pulls out all the, the Disney animation bag of tricks. They are, you know, they're the OGs. They're as good as anybody at pratfalls and explosive comedy. But the, the emotional core of this movie is so strong and the writing is so strong that even though there's all of that big stuff and the action sequences and the destruction and the fun and the jokes and the thing and the blah, like none of it works without this and this works without any of that. So as we've shown in this episode, when we just highlight the, exactly, yeah. the emotional beats, well, it's small and it's broken, but it's still good. And that goes for families and that goes for people. You all are probably familiar with the Japanese art of kintsugi, right? The, that broken pottery. If, if a pottery breaks in America, we just throw it away and get, get new pottery. In Japan, they repair it and they fill in the cracks with gold. Like that, that's the sealant is with the gold. And something is considered more beautiful because it was broken and reassembled than if it had never been broken. 
and and that the uh, the history and the damage and that it's still here makes it beautiful. And I think that's a great life philosophy for families, for people. That's why I became a, specifically a couples and a family therapist was the notion of Kintsugi. I didn't know it at the time, but that idea, something is broken, is beautiful. Yeah. You rise to the occasion, and it's messy, and it doesn't go well every single day, and you get better at it over time. So, Rebecca, where can people find you, aside from Let Me Explain Studios on YouTube, which you should definitely go subscribe to and watch <laughs> all of her videos. They're very funny. Well, you can find me on Instagram, at Rebecca Parham. You can find me on Twitter, underscore Rebecca Parham. And that's pretty much it, in all honesty. <laughs> so until next time... My friends need to be punished. His destructive programming is taking effect. Ohana means family, and family means no one gets left behind or forgotten. And watch, watch movies. movies. You were gonna do it in Stitch? Watch movies. <laughs> <laughs> Missed opportunity. We want to thank our patrons who actually picked this episode on our Patreon. We asked for suggestions and they gave us this. this. Is what Thank we got. you. Thank you for picking it. My you, favorite movie. You got her for it. <laughs> uh, yeah, people like Andrew Feisner. John. Amy Fuller. KG. And Jen Gelber. Thanks, patrons. You're wonderful. Aw. Oh.